Okay, to meet our next presenter, we need to cross the border into Belgium and welcome Cindy Verhoeven with the Sniffers. Cindy, thank you for joining us today to describe how to manage pipeline integrity with a pipeline risk and integrity management software solution. Thank you, Danny, for the for the nice introduction. Um, yes, so today I'd like to have a presentation on pipeline risk and integrity management solution um, for safe and compliant and efficient pipeline operations. And what I mean by that is um, the combination, the essential combination of uh, field surveys, um, uh, good data management, and also a software system to manage all that data. Uh, so a very short introduction of the Sniffers. So the Sniffers is, a, is an environmental service provider. We are active uh, globally in 35 countries and we are a service provider uh, for the oil and gas industry in, in the, the widest sense of the word. So the full supply chain. Um, we provide field services, uh, consultancy, so advice, and also software platforms, and all in the area of uh, emission quantification, uh, leak detection, and pipeline integrity. So we have um, a wide range of, of services, um, and I feel that is, that's also our experience that is uh, quite key for, um, for good uh, pipeline data management is that you combine uh, excellence in field services, but also on the data management and software side. So typically we see um, data is, is, is scattered all over the place. Some, some data is managed in a software, other data is still um, somewhere available on paper documents. And what we aim is to bring everything together in one platform. Um, our platform is called PRIMS, which means Pipeline Risk and Integrity Management Solution. Um, so PRIMS is, um, is one platform for all pipeline data. So uh, on the left side, you see the data that can be entered into the platform, which is pipeline documentation, uh, drawings, uh, right of way, diagrams, etc. Uh, inspection results coming from uh, inline inspections or other types of field surveys, leak detection, uh, cathodic protection, coating surveys, um, and also monitoring of third party activities, which is uh, still a major cause of, of pipeline damage uh, and risk assessment information. Then uh, the output of the software is depending on several modules that, that can be active. So first of all, uh, pipeline documentation. Um, we aim to digitalize and also enhance the quality of available pipeline um, data and drawings. And the idea is to have the best accurate data available in the software and to build um, a 3D model in the best way possible. So with all the, the properties, the features, the um, uh, XYZ data, the individual welds, etc. Uh, also right of way documentation uh, can be handled in the software. Then of course the inspection information, uh, which is very important for, uh, for condition assessments of the pipelines. So the software can take in data from various sources, um, ILI inspections, uh, cathodic protection surveys, uh, different types of coating surveys, such as uh, SIPs, DCVGs or ACVG, leak information performed by uh, various inspection methods. It can be leak detection by foot, by car, or even aerial inspections and also, for example, internal and external uh, metal loss, uh, which is obtained by corrosion as assessments. Um, so what we do with that data is we, we plot the uh, internal and extursion, external corrosion data on uh, a map overlay of the pipeline, together with all the features that are 
already available. And that's what you, what you see here. And immediately the risk points become clear on the map. So on the, here on the X, uh, axis, you will see the length of the pipeline. And the red line is, is uh, the clock position. So basically, if you would uh, cut the pipe uh, open and make it back into a flat metal sheet, then the red line is uh, on the 100, 180 degrees, which means it is the bottom of the pipeline. So here you see um, a combination, what, what we can do with that, with all that data coming from various sources. So for example, um, external corrosion surveys, we can combine with um, uh, metal loss uh, surveys based on uh, coating or SIP surveys that you see here. And basically on the same position of the pipeline, you can uh, identify problems that that uh, that can occur when you perform several surveys and based on uh, on that analysis you can derive certain conclusions that would otherwise remain uh, invisible if you would only perform if you only have one data layer so what we see is that the combination of data layers in that software is cru crucial for uh, for a good pipeline condition assessment so this was an analysis for external corrosion. And here you see an analysis for internal corrosion where we plot ILI data again on the, over the length of the pipeline, clock position on the Y axis. And uh, below uh, you see the pipeline profile, uh, which is basically here the, the gray line is the, um, um, how do you say, the soil. And the blue line is the pipeline. So immediately, immediately you see that the problems occur on the lowest point of the pipeline, which is a, a river crossing. And based on this data, you can, uh, you can derive the ERF and P safe factor for the pipeline. So the, the, sorry, the ERF is the estimated repair factor and P safe is the safe operation pressure for the pipeline. Here you see the same data plotted in a graph. So this is uh, based on a single survey. Uh, the green line is the 80% metal loss line and the yellow line is the ERF, the estimated repair factor and all the data points um, need to be at least below this line to allow a safe operation. So on the left side, the graph that, that uh, shows that the operation of the pipeline is safe. Uh, but there is, there is one point um, that you see also here on the right graph that is coming pretty close to the maximum operation pressure. The green line here is the maximum safe operation pressure. And obviously here all the points are still above that line, but there are some risks to be expected in the near future. Um, what is also important is that the software performs these analysis according to, uh, to the standards, as you can see here below. So ESME, Br uh, British Standard, the API 579 uh, and DVG, DVGW 473. If we move further, um, we can also compare several of those analysis to each other. For example, you have uh, performed an ILI run um, here, for example, in 2010 and in 2015, and you're going to compare that data. And on the same spot here, on the length of 2,200 kilometers, you see here that we have a growth, when we compare those data sets, we have a gro corrosion growth of three millimeters. So that uh, these are analysis that you can do uh, based on if, if you build historical data in the software and compare several uh, surveys. 
Of course, if you compare historical data, you can also predict something for the future. And I think that's, that is also quite important to make choices and uh, to make decisions on um, investment, repair costs, and, uh, and also operating pressure. So here uh, you see the same point, it is marked in green. And if we make a forecast for um, 10 years, for example, you see that this point will become above the uh, ERF line together with some other data points. But this was the first, the first one that will be our concern. So we need to take some action in the near future. And also on the right, you see that that point um, will be very close to the safe maximum operational pressure. Um, here you see the same data sets. So from two surveys uh, plotted in the projection over time. Uh, and then indeed you see here, this was 2018. You will have to make uh, one investment. This is a critical feature that you will need to repair in order to prevent problems in the near future. So these are uh, assessments that the software can do. And it, it makes it very easy for pipeline operators and owners to make those decisions because it becomes very, very visible and very tangible. So based on those uh, fitness for purpose and remaining life assessments, um, you can do a life cycle assessment for the pipeline. Again, this is, this is fully aimed to, um, to make decisions and also to, uh, to be able to predict decisions in the near future. So expected uh, a level of repairs and also the costs that, uh, that come along with those repairs and also choices uh, based on the desired service life of the pipeline. So then finally, uh, the, the final module in the software is also risk assessment. So through all that data, um, we are going to look at the, the likelihood and consequence of uh, pipeline incidents to happen. And um, so many factors can be a part of that risk assessment. Uh, so these parameters are, for example, damage of third party, the corrosion and the corrosion growth, design parameters, um, operational risks, etc. So a Kent Mulbauer model is used for this risk assessment. And um, yeah, it, it gives, um, we, we feel that by combining the expertise in the field surveys, combined with the data sets that are available in the software, we can provide uh, this type of in-depth advice to, to the end customers, the pipeline operators, and uh, they can then base their decisions accordingly. Well, Cindy, thank you so much for the presentation. Great to hear about the work that the sniffers are doing. You're welcome.